Well, hi, thanks for joining me in my shop. We're going to be working on this uh, Garrard 3000 record player that goes with the Claritone T11 uh, receiver here. And uh, this all looks to be in pretty good shape, so I'm not expecting a lot of trouble. Oh, it's on its side. Not going to work well like that. So I've got the power cord plugged into the receiver. I've got the audio output also in the receiver. So you can listen to it through the receiver. And what am I missing? Um, nothing really. I don't have speakers connected here in the shop, but I'll be able to hear it on my headphones. And so will you in the video sound. So let's just... My guess is this guy's going to work great. It's going to work great right away. <clears throat> That's my guess. Yeah, it's got a needle. That seems just fine. Set the 33. Let's give the record player some power. Um, hmm, I wonder if I need to have this switched on or not. Okay, so at the moment the, the main uh, receiver camera where I'm going to stand in front of it the whole time. Receiver's off right now, so we'll see if this will work with the receiver switched off. Probably not. And we need some power too. Power would help. Oh, it does work. Looks pretty good. I'll be able to check its speed later with this. Hey, thanks. My buddy Scott sent me a PDF of that. <laughs> Be able to check the speed properly, but I'm, I mean, look at it, it looks just fine. Let's stick a record on there. Let's put on a record. Okay, we're going to put on a 10 inch record, actually a 78. Let's see what happens. Hmm, okay, let's try that again. Okay, wow, we didn't get too far. <laughs> we did not get too far. Power off. Everything looks fine to me. Well, everything's moving freely. I, I don't quite see why. Uh, Oh, what just happened there? Everything, everything seemed to change. Not sure what happened. Is that my imagination? I suppose it's possible if one of these hasn't operated for a long time that it may be stuck, something may be stuck. And just a little tiny touch, loosen it up. On the other hand, okay, so still she's a dudden.
I think maybe the best thing to do is pull the platter off. Take a look at what's going on under there. Because it won't turn backwards at all, I think that indicates a really good grip on the intermediate wheel. A little bit of springiness even suggests to me a rubbery feel to it, which is a very good sign. Now let's see if we can get this clip off here. one of these really funny shaped clips. It's kind of a locking, a locking feature to it. You have to kind of bend those a little bit. Just prying them with a uh, screwdriver like I did. Okay, this is not stuck at all. Every indication is the lubrication is in pretty good shape on this. Okay, so this is would stop it for sure surprised everything I just I just said the lubrication looks really good on this and then the next thing you know not so hmm wow this is really stuck okay so I'm gonna guess what's happened is this this player's been through uh, maintenance with somebody but they did not do this step really stuck on there. Okay, let's, let's heat that up. I find heating it up is usually the uh, easiest way to see the uh, This piece down here should be totally loose also when it's not. It feels stuck completely. Okay. Could use a like a little torch for this or you know a lighter type thing and get this done a lot faster than the way I'm doing it here. So I've got about 150 degree air coming out of the end of this. these get stuck to the center shaft and you force them too hard, you can force the center shaft to come loose on its uh, rivet. There's usually a rivet underneath. You really don't want that to happen. So you can only put so much force on these guys here. I don't dare stick my finger on this now and find out how hot it is. Maybe this isn't going to do the trick. A little 
producer all the time. some solvent into the arrangement here. But just a bit of alcohol. Some of these I have worked at uh, for as long as an hour to get it off. And believe it or not, after an hour, I mean, you're pretty sure everything must be wrecked. You get these off, you can clean them up, put them back on, they work perfect again. Looking to see if the center shaft is actually turning. I don't think so. I think that center shaft is turning. That would be a crummy thing to have happen. Let's take a closer look here. I think that's a bad, 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 bad situation. Ah, it is turning. Fooey. Okay, that's not so good. Not so good. Not so good. I thought I looked at it and saw that it wasn't turning. Okay, I'm gonna apply a little stronger heat to this. If you apply too much heat to this, you just get it so hot you can't handle it. I don't want that to happen. But, uh, I'm going to put it right on the shaft. Okay. 
Okay, set my can of gas aside. And when we look inside, you can see the uh, <laughs> warmth. Everybody gather around the warmth here. Um, well, you know what? That still has a lubricating quality, but there's none really inside the uh, raceway here. You can see a little bit of dirt in here too. Looks like leaves or grass, grass cuttings. I don't know what it is. Maybe this was in somebody's garage or somewhere, somewhere outdoors for a while. So this, oh look at that, it actually turns. Usually these little rollers are stuck, <coughs> stuck tight. Hmm. I'm a little surprised. I think I'm just going to give that a shot of, uh, <coughs> excuse me, WD-40 here. Booah! There's a little much. quite freely. Okay, now this is supposed to slide without lubrication. There's a little bit of lubrication on the top of it. <coughs> that ha would have to be from the manufacturer. Okay, so at this point, see that? Now that is supposed to See if it's stuck or something. There's a, a freeness in this lever. You can't quite see here. There's a freeness in this lever or a, a loose mechanical connection to this point. So this is pushing up against a part. This. And this is supposed to be as loose as can be. And look at it. Stuck. This is a bad one. So again, the, somebody, I think somebody did maintenance to everything, but they didn't do this. This this really needs to be done. It's a problem, all right. So this is another case. There's a uh, a sleeve in the in the shape of this part, and a shaft that goes through it, riveted to this piece of metal. If you work this too hard with the shaft frozen, similar to what I was talking about here, with this coming loose, this can come loose. And uh, this is just not what you're looking for. It, it, it may in the end not really interfere with the operation of things, but it's not what you're wanting to do. You don't want to make it loose at that point. You know, so you force these things to get into trouble. Big trouble. Big bad trouble. So hey, you know what kind of trouble I'm having these days? Why I wasn't even in the shop yesterday? I can't get off watching the news on the TV. I become a news hound. Like lots of people, I I, I uh, am fascinated by news. You know, there's a uh, sociological thing going on there. And uh, these days. It seems like every 20 minutes I gotta see what happened, what happened, what happened. <laughs> what kind of world are we in that every 20 minutes? It's gonna fit in there. with that little piece. There it is. It should just it should just fall. It's still sticky.
snug on there. Oh, smokes. It's more than snug. shaft is probably turning. Yeah. No use turning it. That's pretty interesting. How come that went white? It's all white inside here too. That's what's got to get off. Got to get that off. I guess there can be a, a I mean, maybe this isn't too hard to believe, there can be a film on here of dried lubricant, incredibly thin. It has to be incredibly thin because it's got to fit in the gap between the uh, shaft and the sleeve. Incredibly thin, so thin you can easily think it's not even there. So this part I'm working on is called the velocity sensor, or the velocity mechanism. Can be up or down? Should have, made, should have made a note of that. I should video these things. case I watch an awful lot of news these days can't even call it news it's more like an installment in a soap opera okay now that's exactly how you want that loose loose like that perfect Put a little bit of uh, grease in there. I use a synthetic grease that I don't think it's going to dry out. Okay, don't get it on here, just in the raceway. On the shaft here. So I've avoided on my videos until this moment saying anything about anything to do with politics uh, because of the level of abuse that it triggers. Um, the terrible, terrible, terrible situation with the internet. Just a terrible situation. And a lot of people, if you notice my video channel is, it's got my name on it. That's not by accident. That's me making a statement. I'm not afraid to uh, reveal who I am by name, anything I say or do. Isn't that normal? I guess 
So this is in a funny spot, but it should still be okay. There we go. So what's going wrong here? I have another one of these small clips. What, what am I doing wrong? What's happened? Oh, nothing's happened. Nothing's happened. Wow, that doesn't seem right. It's not right. I do have to have an extra small clip. What? See what happened? I lost my concentration. Oh. Well, well, I'll remember at some point. <laughs> ah, it's not good to get these projects done and have parts left over. This dust, spin the motor. The motor spins very nicely. There's dust down in there though. engine oil. Motor oil. I'm going to use it on a motor here. That's just a vast amount of oil compared to what's needed. Uh, somebody commented that it's great to have an oil delivery thing with a needle on it, and I have one. <laughs> Why I didn't use it just now, I don't know. spindle. I'm pretty sure that's the case. That oil will get down into the upper bearing. Oh, I got oil on the rubber from my fingers. A shameful thing. here while I'm trying to take it off. This is great. This is in great shape. It's one of the best I've ever like it's, it's like new. I wonder if somebody got a new one of these and did all that stuff but never ever did the work on this. Oh I should have taken this out here. I don't know if I can get it out now. Oops uh we're going to do everything. We should do everything. Okay, so this is the main bearing. This one, you get a fair bit of dirt down into it, often. I guess stuff can get under the platter and travel right up. I've had 
record players that obviously uh, girls had with long hair. There's long hair in it. Stuff like that. It's obviously good to get all that stuff out of there. And there's a bottom one. And usually under that is a rubber O-ring. You can see it there. So the weight of the platter is actually sitting on this rubber, uh, which is a little bit of vibration isolation. Not much, I imagine. But a little bit anyway from the rest of the record player. See, if you're not careful, the sound of the motor will end up reaching the needle just through all the parts here. Okay, bottom one. Now, what about this guy here? So, uh, the grease in here is probably still pretty greasy. Oh no, it's, no, no, it's turned into cake. So this is another indication that uh, my story about somebody uh, working on this but not doing some of the trickier stuff. Does that, you know, the wheel, if you don't take the wheel off, you can't get this main bearing off. You know, maybe if we look again underneath, we'll a closer look, we'll find out nothing's been done to it. I'm just totally mistaken. Yeah, this stuff is just dried up. Now, because of where this is located, right up against the center shaft here, uh, you would need one heck of a lot of resistance in this to affect the operation of the record player. I would think. Because it's it, the, uh, any uh, friction or resistance in here is overcome by just the dimensions and the, I guess the gear ratio would be the right word for it. Okay, I uh, just put away the, uh, there it is, the ultra slick. can't help but get your fingers greasy while you're doing this, by the way. Try to get rid of some of the excess. Oh, there's a hair floating around. It's on my thumb. Hope it's not one of my hairs, because frankly, I don't have that many. I can't afford to donate hairs to somebody else's record player. Okay, the top washer. There we are. Fantastic. Put in the. I kind of look at where the uh, this roller is and try to match it up with this. So I don't have to fight with it too much. Oh, right on. Right on. Now I still, wait a minute, while I have this off, where did I get that other clip from? Oh my gosh, am I ever stupid. A magic trick. Just make it appear. I always thought these things were called C clips. It turns out they're called E clips. Ah. 
If you're going to try what I'm doing right now, be ready to lose the clip. If you don't get your plier on there exactly right, she's going to go flying. Beautiful. I think it's time to, to test it out. I'll put the platter back on it. As soon as I put some pops on a few things here before I have a, an accident. I better uh, degrease my fingers a little bit. You ever wonder where your missing socks are going? I've got them. They're all here. Okay. Where's that clip go? I'm crying out loud. <laughs> oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. We better clean this out. We better clean this out. I can see the ugliness. suppose there's other cleaners you can use, probably stuff that's actually better in some respects than just using alcohol. Now this this is not like a continuous shaft here. There's two bushings at either end of this piece. Those bushings are what contact the uh, shaft here. And they are what needs to be cleaned out. I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but yeah, you can. You can see there's a brass bushing only goes down so far. Same thing on the top here. I think I've just about finished that. I've been watching a lot of videos on uh, ancient architecture, I guess you would call it, you know, pyramids and stuff like that. And uh, I, I just started watching one one night done by a guy named Brian Forrester who gives tours in Peru and all, all these kinds of places, Peru, Egypt, all over the place. Having a, a fascinating life exploring all this interesting stuff. And, uh, you know, over since I've been a kid, I've heard a number of different things about how the pyramids were built. You know, the standard one being by thousands and thousands of slaves. But I've, I've come to know that none of those stories are particularly true. Um, because as time has gone by, more and more has been discovered. Uh, actual, you know, writing from back then. The really interesting thing is, in just about all of these old sites, uh, if you think about the ones in Peru with the uh, Incas, the Incas worked with stones, you know, like this big or you know maybe double this size, the kind of stuff a strong person could, a strong man could pick up and move. And so when you look at the uh, Inca buildings, that's what you see. You see a whole bunch of blocks like this. In fact, it's almost rubble glued together with uh, mortar. And 90% uh, of the building will be done that way. And then somewhere, 
because you're kind of in the middle of it, you come across a, a piece where the blocks are 30 times that size, weigh 100 tons, are beyond anything anybody could move, let alone pick up and carry. And they're put together with seams, and, and you've heard this part, with seams you can't stick a pin through. Um, and these blocks are look very different. Often they've come from hundreds of miles away from a quarry, hundreds of miles away, and they've been brought there. Now we, we were told that was done with you know, wooden rollers. Maybe it was. I don't know. Uh, I think about the Great Pyramids. Um, I'm not so sure this applies uh, so much. I've watched so many of those videos, I'm confused now. But certainly down in Peru, lots of examples of the Inca work. Inca is, the Incas lived only a thousand years ago. They're not, they're not from antiquity as such. I'll do a little more cleaning later. So, so why are these two kinds of blocks? Why, why these gigantic, monstrous stones? You can't imagine how they ever moved them. Stitched together with perfect seams, no mortar, no mortar at all. And then there's this other entirely different kind of building done with much smaller stones. And the answer could be the two different people did it. And if you follow that line of thinking, you conclude that there's another civilization that predated the uh, Incas. By how much? Well, the archaeological guess for those who are following this line of thinking is that it could be as much as 10 to 12,000 years ago. When you watch enough of this, these videos and enough of this stuff, you start realizing the story is 12,000 or so years ago, people in different parts of the world had developed significantly advanced technologies, at least for working with stones. And then, basically, something happened. Civili human civilization stopped and really didn't come back until about, I don't know, three, four thousand years ago. It was like six thousand years of mystery, if, if, you, if you believe this. Now, a lot of archaeologists won't, don't want to believe this or won't believe this. The evidence is insufficient and also it blows away any of the current thinking and replaces it with this entirely different story of human development which, for which there is little detail, except these gigantic stones which can be found in all kinds of places in the world. And the, the even weirder thing is when you look at these gigantic stones and how they're put together uh, carefully in you know, different places in the world, they look identical. Hey, it makes the hair stand up on my arm. So, so you know, if you're looking for something to do, why not watch some of these short videos on uh, Egypt and uh, look for this guy's name, Brian Forrester. Forrester is spelled F-O-E-R-S-T-E-R, -E -E something like that. He's got a lot of videos, and they're similar to mine. He just turns the camera on and starts walking around and talking, so uh, I like them uh, a lot. Okay, there we go. So the mechanism is actually engaging here already. Look at that. Haven't done any lubrication underneath the deck. Let's give it a go. I'll put a record on there just to make it realistic. Okay did all that work make a difference? Yeah, it ruined the... Uh, what happened? Well, oh, that was not good at all. Okay, bad things happening here. The record player was in the middle of something. Something funny going on with the speed here. It's 33. 
Okay, here we go. Oh. It's laboring. Let's see when I let go of the speed of the turntable when it prayed up. Still laboring. Not too bad. Certainly not what we would want. 